Coming up, author Carol Carley shares her powerful journey of overcoming abuse and an unexpected phone call saves a woman's life. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We're so happy you could join us today. You know, Emily, I, I really try to instill in my kids that when they start something, not to give up on it. Right. There's so, yes. there's so much importance in completing your task or following through with something you said you were going to do. Right? Mm -hmm. Something I think all of our parents help <laughs> us see when we're younger, right? Absolutely. That importance. And today, we're actually going to hear a story. Carol, who's the author of her own true story, Wounded Heart, Healed Spirit, is the incredible true story of an unlikely follower of Jesus. She's going to join us today and share how it was really easy for her to have given up on God, but how God transformed tragedy into triumph and she ga and gave her healing Amazing. from her past. So yeah. let's Let's welcome Carol to the show. Carol, Carly, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Hi, Emily. We're so glad that you're on. I've had the privilege of reading your book, and it's been such a uh, joy to read, but it's been a difficult story as well. It's a true story of your story, and yet we see what God has done in your life. So you write in your book about your difficult childhood and all that you've been through. So tell us, why did you decide to share this story? Um, I'd have to say I decided to share my story because I realized that even though my childhood was, you know, I was devastated by a violent alcoholic father, but uh, I know that there are a lot of broken, uh, hurting people out there in the world. And I've met, I've met some of them and I've ministered to many of them. And so I think I shared my story and had the courage to do that because I want them to know that if God can bring healing to my shattered life and put it back together that uh, all they really need to do is um, with a lot of other help and especially through the relationship with Jesus they can find hope they can find healing and I'm just an ordinary person but God transformed my life and it's more than I ever could have could have imagined yeah so let's talk about that a little bit if you could describe in a few words how did your life change after you became a Christian well, after I became a Christian, and it's it's so remarkable, and um, I, I use the word unbelievable, and I shouldn't use that word because, you know, um, God creates in us brand new things when we give our life to Christ. But before I was a Christian, I, I had lacked self-esteem. I had no, I didn't feel my life was of any value, and I lacked self-confidence. But I remember the night going forward to the song, Just As I Am, mm -hmm. I, and I went forward and even before I finished saying the prayer, inviting Jesus into my life and into my heart, I felt this, I just felt like this presence within me. The, the miracle of my relationship just beginning then was the very next morning when I woke up to a brand new sunrise, I feel like I had a spiritual makeover. I felt something I'd never felt before. I felt a boldness, a confidence, a courage. And I kind of felt like Rocky Balboa in the movie Rocky. I just felt like bring on any battle that's out there because I can conquer it. And it was just such a transformation and so dramatically that happened to me. And I just, I felt like a new creation in Christ. Mm -hmm. And you can definitely, as you're reading the book, see that, like, or oh, well, hear it. Like as you're going through the book, you can see that transformation in your life over thank the time you. and the different stories. So each chapter of your book ends with a poem or song and you write poems and songs quite a bit. And yeah. even during the process of writing this book, like what was your inspiration? Where did it come from? Um, I have to I have to actually echo the words of the psalmist. This may sound simplistic, but for me, uh, my inspiration really came from my relationship with God through Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, he has inspired me in so many different ways. Even before I began writing my book, I actually prayed to the Holy Spirit a lot. And I remember saying, Holy Spirit, I don't want this just to be my words, but give me your wisdom, your insight, your all of the thoughts and ideas that you want me to share. And when I went, I write, wrote my book longhand so that when I went to type it up at the, at the typewriter on the computer, um, there were parts and in, incredible sections and parts of it that 
I didn't even realize that I had written. I don't remember that. And so that just confirmed to me that the Holy Spirit was in control. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my inspiration comes from him. I don't read or write music, but I've written a lot of hymns for church. And I wrote original songs for three CDs, two, as you've mentioned. And the process has been absolutely something I, I find exciting because what happens to me is I'll just think of the theme or a title of a song. And for example, I wrote a, a song for my son, Josh, called The Gift You Are. Mm -hmm. Within three or four minutes of um, thinking about that song, the melody popped into my head, into my mind with the words. This is how it's been for decades. So um, I can't really take too much credit for for writing the songs and the music because it's just it's a remarkable process that I've had to get used to. Mm -hmm. And you do such a beautiful job of it in the book, wrapping up each chapter with a poem or song of just what you had experienced or what you had talked about in that chapter. So now when you face problems or obstacles, as we all do, how do you rely on the Holy Spirit to guide you to overcome them? Um, I would have to say before I was a Christian, you know, like so many people, I looked within myself and tried to do the best that I could to overcome problems. But one of the most beautiful passages of scriptures, I guess it's my favorite scripture, and um, I rely on it constantly since I became a Christian. And it's when the Apostle Paul is speaking to the Ephesians in chapter one. Here are the words that have changed my life. And I would say given me a passion for my faith and brought my faith into become revolutionary for just an ordinary person like myself. So here are the words. How vast are the resources of God's power open to those who trust in him. They are measured by the strength and might he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. And so why that's been so incredible for me to understand that it tells me just like so many other christians i'm sure we don't have to rely just on our own resources our own um intellect and knowledge and understanding and experiences we can actually access the empowerment of the holy spirit that resurrection power and um, it just seems from the very first moment that i became a christian until now i know i could not overcome a lot of these things without resurrection power. Mm -hmm. The two places in my life where this has happened is um, the Holy Spirit's helped me with the power of forgiveness to forgive my father for um, the childhood that I had. And so I had to empty myself out mm -hmm. and ask the Holy Spirit, fill me with your love, fill me with your compassion and forgiveness before I could minister to my dad. And as he lay dying in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And the other part that has been incredible is um, somehow God has given me this passion to um, pray for healing for many people. I've seen miracles in my family and what I do when I pray for healing is before I actually pray and lay hands on people, I, I just sit at my kitchen table and I offer my hands to Jesus and I just mm -hmm. say, I just say, Jesus, take my humble, feeble hands uh, that are flesh and bone. And when I pray in the hands of people, Lord, may they feel your transforming power, your resurrection power. And that way, I just completely move myself out of the way and give him all the praise and glory. And uh, I've seen a lot of a lot of miracles that I praise God for. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for writing this book. Thank you for writing your story. And uh, if you want more information on Wounded Heart and Healed Spirit or Carol Carly, then visit 700club.ca. Well, now after years of trying to cover her pain, Margot le learns to let God heal her. I felt completely alone. I just started shutting down. I was going to take my life and there wasn't gonna be anybody to stop me. Margot Blair has fond memories of piggyback rides and going fishing with her adoptive father. However, there's one memory she wishes she could forget, the day he committed suicide. I was five years old. My dad was clinically depressed. He had bipolar disorder. He was an alcoholic. No one was able to explain that. So the pain, the hurt, the just the misunderstandings were so deeply rooted. Those emotional wounds grew deeper when her classmates began bullying her about her father's suicide, 
saying that he did it to get away from her. And I'm like, well, maybe that is true. I believe that if he loved me, then he would have not taken his own life. I was afraid, even as a young girl, that the fate of my father was ultimately going to be my fate as well. The pain would get deeper still. I was 11 at the time. I had been hanging out with this girl and she had a boyfriend. I went with her to the boyfriend's house and another one of his friends was there. The friend decided that he was going to sexually assault me at gunpoint. I felt ruined. I felt all it's complete shame. I felt guilty. Margo walked home in the rain. Coming into the house, she'd hoped her mother would ask what happened, but she didn't. I believe that as a mother, she should have known that I was just taken advantage of in some way. I blamed her for everything. Those thoughts of being worthless, those just intensified. Margot dove into partying and having sex, just trying to find acceptance with whoever she could, even starting a toxic relationship with the boy who raped her. This went on until she was 15, and one of her friend's parents insisted on taking her to church. Margot knew about Jesus and had even professed her faith in him as a little girl, but she'd lost that connection after everything she'd been through. As the pastor was preaching, I felt he was delivering this message straight to me. You are chosen, you are worthy. Everything that's happening to you in your life, I can, God can use it for good. So when the pastor offered to baptize Margot, she agreed, seeing this as an opportunity to rededicate her life to Jesus. It was a type of peace. I knew in that moment that God was real. I decided that I was ready to change. I needed to change. Believing God was calling her to a greater purpose, Margot stopped partying and committed herself to school and studying the Bible. She graduated from college at 19 and started her own business as a life coach, helping young girls work through their adversities and leading many to Christ. But as the years went on, her relationship with God waned. At that point, I really wasn't connected in my church home anymore because I had been traveling so much. The crowds of people that I started finding myself with were people who didn't necessarily believe. Because I was even around them, I was susceptible. Then she ended up in an abusive relationship, bringing back the traumatic memories and negative emotions of her youth. How did I get here again? When I was out in the world, people saw this strong woman this bold woman who has overcome all of this adversity. But when I went home, I heard that voice telling me that I was essentially worthless. And I found myself sitting in the man's home with a gun. And I'm about to take my life the same way my dad took his. And in that moment, my phone started ringing. And I pick up the phone and it was my friend she said, I'm ready to give my life to Christ. Will you tell me what I need to say or do? I realized that God used my friend to save me. In that moment, I declared, Lord, I don't know what this is gonna look like, but whatever you need me to do, I'm going to live my life to serve you. Margot put down the gun and led her friend to Christ that night. She realized she'd been covering her childhood pain instead of relying on God to heal her. She devoted herself to rebuilding a personal relationship with Christ through prayer and scripture. But there was one more thing she needed to do to find complete healing, forgive those who'd hurt her. God brought me to a place where I was able to forgive my mother, my abuser, myself, to break free from these strongholds that have been defining me for far too long. These are the experiences that happened to me, but there is a whole lot more life that I have left to live. And I have to be a voice for God's daughters so that they can learn to heal. Margo is now raising a Christ-centered family while continuing to fulfill her purpose of speaking to women, guiding them to the one true savior. I owe God my life. I have clinically acknowledged depression today, but at the same time, every day, I go to my Bible. 
every day I declare God's truth over me, not that diagnosis. God is a redeeming God. No matter how messy or how deep you think that you have gotten yourself into, God has chosen you. This is a story of redemption and God's ultimate love for us. God will never give up on us even when we want to. You know, men mental illness is very real and very serious. And don't take for granted that just because someone is saved doesn't mean they aren't or can't be experiencing depression. Margot said that she was covering up her pain instead of giving it to God, which I think many of us do, and maybe without even realizing. But God sees the pain and he knows your heart and he will always use what the enemy meant for evil for his good. God orchestrated the salvation of Margot's friend to save her. Do you see how awesome our God is? The devil wanted her gone, but God always wins. And even though Margot had been clinically diagnosed with depression, she doesn't own it because she knows it doesn't belong to her. I just love how she said that she speaks God's truth over herself and not that diagnosis through reading the word every day. If you're battling with disease, depression, sickness, or anything at all, know that it's not yours. It doesn't belong to you because Jesus paid for it all. We were made to be whole and healed on the inside and on the out. So start declaring God's truth over yourself now. One of my favorite scriptures is 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. God chose you. You are not a mistake. You are loved and you have a purpose. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you've come from. God is going to use you. And please call our prayer line right now, 1-855-759-0700 to get this pamphlet and DVD. After the break, see how the power of forgiveness allowed Hermes to find freedom from addiction. What do I enjoy most about what I do? Well, that's easy. I love connecting with people, especially when someone says, I am so glad I can talk with you. I really need prayer. That's God's perfect timing. I talk with people all the time who want prayer for a family situation. Sometimes it's prayer for an emotional or physical need or even a financial breakthrough. It's so amazing that I can share about God's love and encourage people. I love this Bible verse. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. God is at work. I've seen him answer prayer. Won't you call today? 1-855-759-0700. God bless you. I felt very bad. I felt like I was a horrible Christian. God doesn't really love me that much because I must be one of his bad sons. It had been eight years since Hermes Giannis gave his life to Christ. Now at age 30, he just received a DUI and an ultimatum from his wife, Joanna. He said, you keep this cycle up and we're gonna have to get a divorce. You have an addiction to alcohol. You really need help. And I was in there now. I didn't want to really admit that I can't stop. It was crushing. Hermes' path to finding purpose and faith in Christ had started when he was young. Raised by a single mother, he would decided early on that his ticket to success was baseball. By the end of his freshman year, three colleges had offered him scholarships. I lived, breathed, slept baseball. That was my identity right there. I became very arrogant, I became cocky. I was a ninth grader thinking I ran the world. You know, I was like, I got this. Now Hermes was hanging out with his older teammates, smoking pot daily and sneaking into bars. His grades dropped and in his junior year, Hermes was cut from the team. Any shot he had at a college scholarship was gone. It's like my world stopped. It completely froze. So now I was shameful. So even when I would brush my teeth in the mornings, I remember I would look at myself, I always used to curse at myself. To spit toothpaste to a mirror, like, I, I can't believe you, you know? Almost overnight, Hermes became an alcoholic. I would bring a water bottle, 
with me and people would think it's water and I'll have vodka in there and just drinking it like it was normal. I was literally drinking my life away. I was committing suicide slowly. Then one night, drunk, high, and on his way home from a club, Hermes was in a terrible car accident. He woke up in an ambulance with a paramedic looking over him. And he goes like this to me, I'm a Christian man and God saved your life. Nobody usually um, survives an accident like this. I just kind of brushed it off. I just didn't understand that God would save me, you know, that, that there's somebody out there that loves me. I didn't feel loved. Hermes kept up his party lifestyle. A few years later, a friend insisted that he go to church with her. I heard who Jesus is. I started hearing about my sin problem. I had no idea what sin was, but it hit me. It started touching me. What hit him harder was what the pastor said at the end of his sermon. A young man in here, he's in this building right now, and you've been going through this and this, and everything he was saying was exactly what I've been through in the past four years. There has to be another kid in here. That can't be me. He's like, young man, if that's you, don't leave this place without giving your life to Jesus. And it hit me. And I broke down like a baby right there. I surrendered my life to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I don't know who you are, but I asked for you to come into my life. Even then, he wasn't convinced Jesus was who he said he was. So a few days later, while struggling with pain from an old back injury, Hermes decided to test him. And I said, Jesus, if you're real, you come and you heal my back. And it was just me on my knees and I'll never forget this moment. It felt like the whole atmosphere around me just changed instantly. And I felt like this heat around my back from head, from the whole spinal, it was like a heat that went up and down. And I knew something was there. I knew it was God. I've never had back pain ever again in my entire life. And I knew that it was Jesus Christ who healed my back. I knew it was him. From that point forward, I was convinced. Hermes says Jesus also set him free from drug addiction. He dove into his new faith wholeheartedly. Found myself a mentor. He started teaching me the word of God. I got me a Bible, so I started reading the gospel, growing in the knowledge of Christ. I started understanding, you know, that I'm a sinner, that I need forgiveness. Soon after, he met Joanna and they married and started a family. Although growing in his relationship with God, he still struggled with alcohol. I would fall into addiction every time a situation would happen to me, you know, because there was still a uh, pain in me that I wasn't really dealing with. That pain stemmed from his childhood and the father he never knew. That wind of anger and hatred that I had towards my father was just getting deeper and deeper as the years went by, you know. I hated him even as a Christian. I was like, I don't want to forgive that man. He doesn't deserve it, you know, so I was struggling with that. Then came the DUI, his wife's threat of divorce, and a few nights later, a dream where he was wrestling with a man he knew was his father. And it showed me in the dream how I had to, and I must forgive him. I must release him and let him go, and that God loves him. And I know that was the root of everything right there. For that, Hermes needed God's help. I was challenged to forgive him through prayer every single day, you know, and God would pour into me his love and help me feel what God felt for my father. And when I would pray for him, I started feeling compassion for him. I started forgiving him, and this took a while, it took months, but that was my freedom. Hermes has been sober since 2019. He and Joanna have a beautiful marriage, and their family is thriving. He's now a pastor at a Christian recovery center for men called The Caring Place. There's a God out there who really truly cares about every single detail of your life. Now it's like I eat, sleep, live, breathe Jesus. Like that's it, I'm sold out. And he loves me with an unconditional love. There's nothing better.
What a joy it is to see people come to faith in Jesus. And we are seeing that across Canada through the ministry of 700 Club Canada. And we want to invite you to be a part of that. You can do that by becoming a monthly partner today. And when you do, we want to send you a gift entitled Biblical Answers to Today's Questions. It's a DVD and workbook. And when you join as a 700 Club Canada monthly partner, we'll send you that. All you have to do is call one 855 7590700 and it's yours today. You'll also receive our monthly newsletter frontline, so call now. Are science and faith incompatible? How could a loving God allow so much suffering? So what are the signs of the end times? Let biblical truth guide your thinking on the major issues of our day. God wants to give you wisdom. Become a CBN partner and get biblical answers to today's questions. The Word of God has the answers we're looking for. Call now and get biblical answers to today's questions. We saw some incredible stories today about mm -hmm. how God never gives up on us, about his redemptive power, his love. Mm -hmm. You know, Margot's incredible story dealing with depression and God mm -hmm. saw her through it and her Hermes as well as a young alcoholic and abusive father. But God always, always, always yeah. was there for them the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, he chases us just as, yeah. as much as he wants us to come as to him. As much as we right? run away, he yes, chases yeah, us. Yeah, that too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He'll meet us wherever we're at. Exactly. And you know, as we gear up for summer, one of the things we have to think about is our health, right? right? God cares about our whole being. And because of that, as we lead into the summer, we're going to be launching a new series on YouTube Amazing. called Wellness Wednesday. So Can't every wait. Wednesday this month in June um, on our YouTube channel, you can go on there. Our first one's going to be this coming Wednesday on spiritual health. So make sure to su subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get those as soon as they're uploaded. Yeah, it's going to be so great. And we also have a couple of prayer requests. We have Nancy, please pray for my grandson. He's going through a tough time. And Andres, please pray for me. I've been dealing with insomnia, anxiety, and depression. So God, we just lift both of these individuals up to you, God, as they are going through a difficult and overwhelming time, that you would just bring peace into them, that you would help Andres be able to to sleep, Father God, and we just pray uh, for this grandson that you would keep him and protect him and help him to know that he is loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And our power verse today is Psalm 86, 15. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. To contact us, visit 700club.ca. On the next 700 Club Canada, a devastating train accident leads one woman on a journey of faith and a man needing multiple organ transplants experiences a miracle.